Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Windows XP mode. When Microsoft released Windows 7, they knew that a lot of their users were still on Windows XP, especially after their disaster with Windows Vista. So they needed a way to entice the Windows XP users to upgrade to Windows 7. One of the ways to do that was to release a Windows XP mode. Windows XP mode is simply a virtual machine that allows you to virtualize your Windows XP applications as well as just generally get Windows XP on side of Windows 7. This made virtualizing Windows XP ridiculously easy because it's just an installer. There's no need to mess with ISOs, none of that. It's simply just a Windows XP mode executable that we have to install to our Windows 7 machine and that's all. So this is the only thing really still on Microsoft's website that exists about Windows XP mode, and this is on the Social Tech Net forms. So, Windows XP mode is simply nothing more than a virtual machine that emulates the applications installed onto it to the host using the capabilities of IC so that this software is available in a form of easily accessible, transparent, and without much difficulty to the user. So like I said, it's really opening virtual PCs to the typical user, and it's not making it hard. So we can see that Windows Virtual PC in XP mode can be downloaded from the site, but the site no longer exists. Microsoft recently took down the Windows XP and the Virtual PC download websites, so we can't really do that. Archive.org has actually archived both the Virtual PC and the Windows XP mode file. This is how we're going to be looking at it today. I couldn't download it from Microsoft's website, so we're going to have to download it from archive.org, which did take a little bit longer, but we have them on our computer right now to demonstrate and take a look at. So the first thing we need to do is install Virtual PC. Now this isn't your typical Virtual PC installer, this is something a little different. It opens up as a Windows Update standalone installer, which asks us to install a KB update. Once we install this, we'll have a modified version of Virtual PC installed on our computer, which is meant specifically for Windows XP mode. So once that KB update has installed, we have to restart our computer. So once we're, gonna, once we're in the VM, we're going to take a look at our start menu, and like I said, here's our Virtual PC desktop. And clicking on Microsoft Virtual PC, it simply opens a file explorer window. But we did see something else there we saw Windows XP mode. But when we click on Windows XP mode, it says that we have to download it. But when we click on download, it takes us to a website that no longer exists. So just because this is a larger file, I think this is about 500 megabytes, I'm gonna go ahead and extract this onto our desktop. And now we can go ahead and run the Windows XP mode ENUS. This is the English US version, of course. Welcome to setup for Windows XP mode. So setup is going to install Windows XP to our computer. We we'll go ahead and click next and then select our location. So this has its own file. It's not inside of a virtual PC directory. It's program files, Windows XP mode. And now we're installing the hard disk file. This may take a little bit, but it's a pre-configured Windows XP. So you don't have to go through the setup. It asks you for a name and password. That's about all. And it doesn't even do that inside of the virtual machine. It actually opens up a separate window. Once this is completed, this is our Windows XP mode setup. So we can of course accept the license terms, and then click next. From here, we can see that our username is automatically selected as XPM user, and we can enter a password. We can't skip the password, we actually have to enter one, so I'm just going to enter a password here. We can go ahead and enter credentials and then remember them, which is recommended, but we also have help in Windows Virtual PC that basically tells you all about credentials, and that's really it. So going ahead and click next, we can select what kind of updates we want. If we want to protect our computer by turning automatic updates on or not right now, we're going to go ahead and do not right now because we're not actually using this. All right, so now we are ready to actually start the setup of Virtual PC, and this is all it is. It's going to say, welcome to Windows XP mode, and it's going to set it up for the first use. One thing that I would like to mention is that Windows 7 Home Basic and Windows 7 Home Premium are not compatible with Virtual PC mode. The only three versions that are compatible are Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate, and then Windows 7 Enterprise, as we can see right here. Only these three editions will be compatible with Virtual PC. <coughs> Alright, so I believe this is because we're just virtualizing this. However, we could not enable integration features, which I'm not too worried about. We're just going to go ahead and click Continue. Now this is being really slow right now, however we are now captured inside of the Windows XP mode VM and it's booting up. I'm not going to say it's going to boot up fast, it's probably going to be a little slow um, as it is, but let's just take a look around the actual virtual PC window. So taking a look around the window itself, we have action to sleep or close tools, we can enable integration features, which we can't do, or install integration components. 
and then we can press Control alt delete that's all we have on this menu now it does say please wait while windows prepares to start so that's weird it's not actually so this is a different version of windows xp than what we would typically see um, it's preparing the start which i think is a little weird all right so now virtual pc integration components are apparently available even though they weren't available 10 minutes ago so we're going to go ahead and click update and now our pc is actually running um, it is running cscript.exe we have a usb option now and the option to restart. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing here. I guess we're waiting for this to load, but at least it's responsive now. All right, so we are now in Windows XP. It only took about half an hour to get here, and everything is being really laggy right now. Um, this is not a good first impression of Windows XP mode, but we can take a look and we can obviously see that this is not a vanilla copy of Windows XP. We have our Internet Explorer right here, then our Windows Media Player, and then Recycle Bin all on the left side. Recycle Bin previously automatically used to be in the bottom right, now it's on the bottom left, and we have more icons on our desktop. So that's a little bit different and so looking in our start menu we can see that our username isn't even the xpm user it's not even that it's simply administrator and just hovering over um there we go we're actually getting more and more responsive now um the one thing i want to take a look at is in my computer all right so now we are inside of file explorer finally and there are no shared um files here shared documents that's always been there um so this is really an isolated vm um, when it's working properly, it really gives Windows XP users that sense of familiarity with their operating system, and they still get all the security benefits of Windows 7. Um, even maximizing it, it tries to go full screen. It's not working very well. Um, I think simply this is because I'm just virtualizing it, um, but it's not virtualizing too well. But that's really all we have for Windows XP mode. Um, there's nothing really special about it. It's just a Microsoft Virtual PC version of Windows XP that was tweaked by Microsoft themselves. Um, and it allowed for software compatibility. So with that being said, let me know if you've ever used Microsoft Windows XP mode or even Virtual PC 2007. I would be interested to know and see if you've used it and if you've ever had the same experience. I feel like using VirtualBox in Unity mode would be much simpler than this mess that we're doing here. So, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.